Hi everyone. So I'm going to share a crow with you this morning. I know it's been a while since I've done this, but I've been sick and it's been a crazy end of the semester. So um, I am working on balancing this one from just a rough scrape. It's a real nice piece of cane, um, but it's got a very interesting crow. So the only parts I've worked on are the tip, the blend, and the heart. Now that's a sound that would freak my students out. They, but I actually kind of love it. It means that things are vibrating, but something is uneven. And um, the biggest clue for me is right here. I can tell that I've got a lower slope going here than I do going here. So there's something I have to correct um, in the V area, which I'm going to do and see if that cleans up that crow. So the thing about that crow that is really interesting is that <clears throat> before I started working on it, when you blow through the crow, everything vibrates all at once. I couldn't separate the tip from the heart crow, which is a sure sign that I had something going on in my um, blend area, which, it, which I've now kind of cleaned up, made more even. You can see from the side, especially when you look at the slope right here on each side. So things are looking a lot more um, even and symmetrical. And now the crow sounds like this. Now there's a whistle, which means I probably in trying to fix that problem have dug out a little bit in the back of the tip, which I'll have to figure out. But I do like that now I have clean tip, heart. Now the, or not heart, the low crow is, is there. But the low crow is um, shy. <laughs> it's there, but if I blow too hard, it goes away. So now that tells me I gotta, I've got to do something more in the middle. And I can take start taking more out of the back to see if that doesn't free it up. So that's what I'll do next. So this is why I say that the back um, releases the lows. So all I've done is... Um, sort of rough in the back a little bit more. I've separated the heart from the back and um, done that on both sides. I haven't taken a whole lot out, but there's a noticeable change. Um, if you look at it from the sides, you can kind of see that I've tucked in a little bit up here. Now, this is a Gilbert gouge, and I know that it kind of likes that, but that's literally all I did was just sort of put the back in, make sure it had a little less cane in it than the heart. And now here is the crow. So the low crow is a lot more free. It did pull the pitch down. There's still some rattle, which is a sign that I need to go back up and clean up um, the sides of the tip, which I will do next. But that's what I mean when I say that the back um, releases the lows and supports the highs. Uh, so when I'm balancing a reed, <clears throat> I want to hear the low crow when I'm working the tip and the heart and the blend area. But it doesn't have to be like rock solid because I know that once I take a little bit more out of this, that low crow will drop in. Some people may wonder, well, then why don't you just do that right away? The reason I don't do it right away is because if you take too much out of the back, it kind of, in my opinion, locks up the front of the reed. And those are the reeds where you feel like you can't get enough dynamics out of them or you're blowing as hard as you can and there's just not enough sound coming out of the reed. And it's usually because people have put the back in before the tip and the heart are balanced. That's my, my thought. So, all right, I'm going to continue to finish uh, this one, but I thought I would share that today. I hope that was helpful. And um, I'm happy to be back with you and I will see you again soon. Bye.